looking at the AMD Phenom 2 X4 AM3 processor. When you buy a processor from AMD you usually get the choice of whether you want to buy a retail version which will look a little bit like this or an OEM version which will look just like this. You generally pay a little bit more for the retail version because you get a lot more with it. Generally speaking you'd get the CPU. Inside here is also a stock heatsink as well as a warranty booklet and a case badge sticker. You generally do get a better warranty with a retail unit compared to an OEM unit as well. With the OEM unit it looks pretty much just like this which is just a CPU. Sometimes it will be packaged in a plastic packaging or a black box of some sort just to protect the processor when it's in transit. When I got the AMD Phenom 2 X4955 however it came in a box like this. And once you open it up you'll see the processor in all of its glory. This is the AMD Phenom 2 X4 AM3 processor. AMD have kept with style and tradition and kept the same look that they created for the Socket 754 and Socket 939 processors having the IHS on the top. If you remember back to the AMD Socket A processors it just used to be the chip itself with the core exposed. Carrying on with that styling, you can see that it tells you a little bit about the chip on the IHS. So it tells us that it's the AMD Thenom 2. And just below this is the stepping details. If you go onto the internet, you can find out exactly what these numbers and letters mean. One thing that I do like about AMD is the fact that they've actually thought about what they're doing. Unlike their competitor, Intel, with their stupidly priced i7. If you're looking at buying an i7 system, or just the processor itself, then you have to buy the rest you have to buy new memory, motherboard, that kind of thing. With the AM3 processors like the Phenom 2, you don't have to do that. We're looking at two particular boards today which are actually AM2 boards or AM2 Plus, which means that with a simple BIOS upgrade, we can get it to accept our Phenom 2 chip. So if you have got an AM2 board, have a scout around on the manufacturer's website and you may find that because it's all 940 pin, you may be able to fit your AM3 processor into this lovely AM2 socket here. Also another good thing with the AM3 processors like the Phenom 2X4955 is the fact that it's got a multiple memory controller. So this particular board has got four slots for DDR2, whereas this board sports two slots for DDR2 memory or two slots for DDR3 memory. So you can decide whether you want to run it with DDR2 or DDR3. Of course DDR3 is a more expensive variant but it has got a higher bandwidth. So it's entirely up to you and of course your board how you're going to run the processor and, and what memory you're going to run it with. I think we can all safely agree that AMD are starting to get back on track and with rumours of them hitting 4GHz stock by 2010 this can only mean good things and giving Intel some competition along the way of course. From the results we can see that it gives some very good benchmarks and bang for buck it wins hands down, well compared to Intel's more expensive Core i7 of course. If you shop around you can find this for around £150 and with the ability to clock it to around 3.7GHz it will have a place in my shortlist for a long long while. The only downside that I can see is it being 125 watts. It does run quite toasty. Due to this, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 stars. <laughs>